Hello there and thanks for joining me today. In this short lesson, I want us to talk about one of the most confounding, challenging and complex decisions you're likely to face over the board, which is the pay now, pay later scenario. Now it is worth mentioning that these positions do come up more frequently than we realize. So they are worth studying in some detail. Now the purpose of this video is to give you some insight into some of the indicators you should look out for to help guide you towards the right decision should you be faced with the pay now, pay later dilemma over the board. So let's get started. So here White has a 5-2 to play and can choose to pay now or to pay later. So let's look at those two options. Now, if white were to pay now, he would simply bring two checkers down from the midpoint, 13, 11, 13, 8. Alternatively, white can choose to pay later by clearing the 8 point, 8 to 6, 8 to 3. So what would your decision be? Would you pay now or would you pay later? And why would you make that decision? Now, if we look at the analysis, we can see that the correct move is to pay later by clearing the eight point, eight to six, eight to three. And we can also see by looking at this panel on the left that every other move is highlighted in red, meaning they are big mistakes or what we call blunders. If we were to clear the midpoint, such as this, it is a very big mistake indeed and is shown here as a fifth best move. So let's first understand why this move is so wrong. Why is it incorrect to make the pay now move in this situation? If we look at the position after White has made this 5-2 play, the first thing we should realise is how vulnerable our blot on the 11 point is to being attacked. So any one or any six from green, which is 20 rolls, plus some combinations such as four two and double two will hit us. So that is 23 out of 36 rolls, which is just under being hit two thirds of the time. Now that is simply too much risk to take, particularly when our opponent has a four point board. If we now look at the best play, which is to clear the eight point, let us ask ourselves the same question. Why is this play right? What should we be looking out for over the board? Now this is a position after the move has been played. And what we should see is that our opponent has a very inflexible position. Now that means green is stripped on three different points. He only has two checkers on our 12 point, on our 10 point, and on our five point. So now that green is on roll, now no matter what he rolls, besides some very small numbers, he is going to have to give up one of these points in the outfield. Now, that means that our passage to our home board as white is likely to be safer on a future roll. So the first question to ask yourself is, is our opponent's position likely to become more or less threatening for us as white? Now, if it's going to become less threatening on a subsequent roll, it's worth making the pay later play now. So here we can see that green has an inflexible and stripped position, but there is more to take into consideration. We need to also, in these pay now, pay later scenarios, consider the roles for not only ourselves, but also our opponent, particularly the bad roles for our opponent. We want to try to develop a holistic approach to backgammon, thinking about all the roles for ourselves and also for our opponent. And if we give that some thought, we can see that 6-1 plays badly for green. 6-1 would leave a shot. 6-1 green would play most likely 12-6 to 6, 
and then expose himself to being hit with any one, 11 shots. And of course, we do have the stronger home board here. Now, it's not just 6 1, though, which plays badly for green. We can also see that 5 1 and 4 1, although they do not leave a shot, do destroy his home board and force him to smush it up. So here we can say that for our opponent, 6 1, 5 1, and 4 1 all play pretty badly, which is 6 rolls out of 36. So again, this is an indicator as to why we should clear the eight point and wait to see what happens. Green is either going to sacrifice a point or leave a shot or crunch his home board. Now let's make a variation to this position and move two of Green's checkers from the 10 point to the 12 point. Now here, how would you choose to play 5-2 as white? Would you pay now or would you pay later? And the correct decision here is to pay now by bringing two down from the midpoint, resulting in this position. If we choose to make the pay later play, it is showing as an error. So why is it now a mistake to make the pay later play? So let's consider the difference between the previous position. Now the thing we should notice now is that Green has better flexibility in his position because he has two spare checkers here that he can play down into the outfield. His point is no longer stripped as it was before. So if we do make the wrong play here by paying later and bringing two checkers off the A point, A to six, A to three, and then green rolls something like three, two and brings one checker down from the mid. Now as white, we have a bigger problem because any six besides double six is going to force us to play from the midpoint and leave ourselves open to more attacks, any one, and also indirect numbers as well. So by holding back here, we forced ourselves into a worse position because green now has the increased flexibility to play the extra checkers from his midpoint. Now, let's make another change to the position what if green had a five point board instead of a four point board? What would you choose to do now? Now green again has two stripped points here with only two checkers. So how would that help guide your decision? Now the correct move here is eight to six, eight to three. Now, even though green is stripped, there is a big difference between a five point board and a four point board. Here, bringing two down would be a monster mistake because if we were to get hit here with any six and dance, then of course the cube is coming back at us and it would be a pass. We only had 11 entries on a five point board, whereas before with a four point board, we had 20 entries. So therefore, it often wouldn't lead to a pass. So here, it's simply much better to make the safe play. Now, if we were to increase Green's flexibility by adding another checker from his five points to the midpoint, what would be our decision now with five two? And I can tell you that again, it's simply better to clear the eight point. Again, it's showing as a blunder to pay now. So here, there is a big difference between whether our opponent has a four point board or a five point board. With a four point board, if we were to get hit on 
the six point, then there is some potential to get back into the game by entering and hitting back with a three or one after being hit with the six. But here, it's just, we're dead, <laughs> basically, if we get hit. So the thing to do in this situation when our opponent has a five point board is just to wait for a double. So after making this play with 5-2, resulting in this position, Green will now play the spare checker down as before into the outfield or into his home board, and then we may roll a double. So here, any double besides double one, so five out of 36 rolls, will vastly improve our position as white. So sometimes it's just worth waiting here. And of course, we may roll something like a 5-1, a 5-2, a 4, and so on. So we might not necessarily have to make that difficult decision on the next roll. So simply hold back, wait to see what unfolds. Do not expose yourself to unnecessary risk if you do not need to. So the questions to ask yourself in pay now, pay later are, is my opponent's position going to become more or less threatening for me? Secondly, who is going to break first? Who is going to break their anchor first? Which ties to the first point of a position becoming more or less threatening? Thirdly, how strong is my opponent's home board? There is a big difference between a five point board or a four point board. Also, which roles play badly for my opponent? How inflexible is his position? Is he stripped on points? How is that going to change things? Does that mean he's going to clear or break anchors? Is he going to become less threatening? All these things are indicators of guiding to you towards the right decision. Can you afford to wait? Should you go now? What is the best decision to make? I hope that gives you some understanding of a complicated scenario, apply it, look up some other positions on XG. Good luck, see you next Wednesday, goodbye.